Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Bismarck Human Relations Committee. Bismarck Human Relations Committee is scheduled to meet regular session on Monday, October 16th, 2023 at 5.15. No idea why we're going through that. Uh, it's been a Monday, but let's roll right into the agenda. <laughs> HRC mission. The purpose of the Bismarck Human Relations Committee is to create an atmosphere of inclusion, equality, and accessibility through education and outreach to recognize the value of a diverse community. We're gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. Whitney is here with us, so she'll be doing roll. Um, at this point, I'm gonna to go to agenda item number one and open it up for public comment. I do see we have someone online and in the room. Perfect. Caitlin's our guy here. Or, oh, he's the communications guy. Communications guy. Okay. Perfect. We'll call one more time for public comment. All right, hearing no public comment, we'll move on to agenda item number two, approval of meeting minutes. Did everyone have an opportunity to look over the minutes in the email? Okay. This is your time to make any adjustments or corrections. If there are none, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from the September 18th meeting. Sergiana with a motion. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Carl with a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Perfect. Meeting minutes are approved. Thank you, everybody. That leads us right away into agenda item number three, partnered events. Uh, sub A is equity and emergency management planning. There was a document that was emailed out to all of us about the equity handout. Did everyone have an opportunity to review that? Thursday, you did not. Perfect. Jason, would you have that to be able to throw up on the screen at all? Oh. Can pull it up. There you okay. go. Right it's going to be right behind us here, Darcy. So at the last meeting, um, is it Gary? Gary Stockert from Emergency Management came and discussed with the HRC committee at that time that they are having to redo their strategic plan for FEMA. And please correct me if I'm wrong. It has been a long day. Um, and is looking as there are new federal um, guidelines for understanding and defining equity. So diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the federal workforce, as well as in FEMA, and uh, strategies for cities to mitigate um, accessing all underserved communities within their city. And so they are seeking the Bismarck HRC's input or guidance on if we would like to give input or work with them at all on helping to not develop, but give guidance. So, so I feel very passionately about this. So, Did I hit that correctly yes. first? Okay, and perfect. So, and so I think, um, I think there was this misconception that he wanted us to like start everything from the ground up. And in reality, what there were, if you look here where it talks about potential project ideas, what they're really asking from us is to help identify populations or groups who would most likely to be um, disproportionate. Why can't I? Disproportionate. Thank you. And that is by disaster <laughs> events and establish communication networks prior. And then identify liaisons or trusted agents on how we can help communicate with them. And um, that's really what they're looking for. They're not looking for us to write a plan for them. Um, my concern kind is- Kind of advise maybe? In advise, that's a great way to put it. And, and my concern is if we don't step up to this, they're gonna go with the same knowledge that they have of who is, you know, maybe missed and things like that and not have the knowledge that our group brings. Um, and even just like a great example was, I immediately went to individuals who don't speak English. Not once did um, India, you know, individuals with any particular disabilities cross my mind, which that was where Sargiana's mind went first because that's the population. So I, I, would think, I would think that too. Right, so collectively we bring really a, a great, great resource to them. And I think we had discussed, Jason, um, even just possibly doing a subcommittee to work with this so that we're not taxing the whole committee and then having to have quorum meetings and all of that. So Correct. people who are interested in it and, um, you know, uh, things like that. 
So is that what we're wanting to, because they're looking for us to kind of oversee what project we'd like to kind of do with them. So is that what we're looking for? That's, in my opinion, would be the easiest and the most beneficial would be to look at those populations that we may be underserved and break those down and then the, who the contacts would be for them if there was an emergency. So if anyone's ever worked in emergency services, it's similar to military or anything like that, you typically have like a stand, uh, an SOP, right? You know, your standard operating procedure. So then in that SOP, it would include, I would assume it would include you know, the population point of contact, just as if it would for my brain today. Is this, I want to call this the federal building, the city building, point of contact, you know, point of contact for Horizon Middle School principal. Like, so we could really help build that list for them and really brainstorm ideas of who the, the underserved populations would be. And it would really kind of give us an opportunity to think of unique situations too, because, you know, um, just with any type of emergency, whether it's a fire, COVID, flooding, tornado, you know, we, and I, I'm correct that he's only the Bismarck area, correct? Mm -hmm. Just strictly Bismarck, you know? So then if we're thinking of, Maybe. Like think like I think of where my business is located and I'm like, okay, there's multiple trailer courts. There's multiple very like we're industrial made out of tin buildings. I wouldn't know if, if a tornado came. I wouldn't know if the nearest location with a safe basement or a say, you know, it's like even None of the trailer houses have right. basements. And so things like that, even like and they probably know their game plan, but I normally you're like, okay, there's a church. The church might be a ways away. So. I, I will say that last month when I was in DC for Impact Week on the Hill, we had a whole day talking about DEIA. So it's not just a North Dakota thing, it's a countrywide thing yeah. that people are focusing on. I like the idea of some community. Yeah, I. I would, I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> I would make a motion to, for a subcommittee and I would be willing I would to chair, uh, you know, to kind of spearhead the subcommittee. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? Can you repeat your motion? I didn't, my notes weren't that fast. Um, <laughs> I would make a motion to create a subcommittee, create a subcommittee and spearhead had it myself. Um, I guess my only further discussion on that would be um, would definitely, I don't know the group's thoughts, if it would make sense for all of us as a subcommittee to sit down and try to meet with him one more time, or if I could just connect with him and really lay out what he's looking for to get a little bit more clarification, because I think we got a little lost in the sauce with some grant questions last time. I don't think that one's ever something since I was in here last month. I'm a little lost, especially to you since you have a background in emergency management and have worked in emergency response services. I feel totally comfortable with you meeting on your own. If I don't think I'll have well, and time is valuable. It's yeah, I mean, because I would bring it to the committee. Yeah, and, and, the, and that's I would kind of okay. And then it would. So I agree. I think a subcommittee is a good idea. In my mind, it would be best to see where they're at. You yes. know, yep. I'm sure that they've dealt with. They have somewhat of a plan in dealing with um, people with disabilities. Various, of, you know, um, I, I wouldn't think say the, with all of them, but some of them. Some of the things he did mention is um, not recognizing that people from foreign countries who are right. here have no idea what even the sirens mean at, at times. Um, those who are houseless and living on the streets, there's not really a plan in action for that, as well as further developing points of contact for all of them. So and when you think of the blind and when you think of the deaf. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, all of those different communities, seeing where they're at 
like trying to have them take the lead and then just us give guidance, guidance instead of jumping in and trying to develop because no. okay. i know for myself and us on the committee we sometimes like to try and help more so instead of taking on another whole huge project right just give guidance but even if it was potentially because because my understanding based on reading this is really they just want the guidance of yep. the populations and the contacts but then when we talk about like the education piece of sirens and things like that i could see that potentially being something where like hey they're gonna host it we can mm -hmm. use our networks to help get the word out versus facilitate yes yep Advisor role, advisor, advisor. I can't speak today. Advisory role. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other yeah. further discussion on the motion on the floor? Any people are you looking at for committee? Two, three, four. It doesn't matter. I think that we had this. You have to be careful we don't hit quorum. And even if we hit quorum, we just have to put out. Meeting meeting notice. Notice. Meeting notice. Which we do anyways. Yeah. Which we do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll so. be more than happy to participate. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, I would too. Send out emails and um, I'll meet. I'll try to meet with. I think he, he sent us his email. Gary. Maybe did. Yeah, it's but, just like city, all city email address. Okay. It's just G Stockard. Okay. okay. So at this point, that you know, we would probably call the vote. Or you go ahead and vote on it before we <laughs> so, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. All those opposed, same sign. Okay. Perfect. So my next point was I was just I'll connect with him, yep. try to connect with him next week and then get emails out. Okay. I, I would just ask on um, the timeline. That we make sure that that's kind of a standing place on the um, agenda. agenda so that we can get okay. feedback and yeah. updates. So do we have an idea of what timeline they're looking at for having that continue? That's what I'm going to try to meet with him about okay. and everything okay. like that. Yep. Okay, good. Anything else further on the equity and emergency management planning? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to agenda item four build committee recognition sub A. These are your neighbors' podcast. Um, I do remember last month we had mentioned talking about possibly transferring or not transferring, but uh, moving the podcast, expanding the podcast onto Spotify or other means. That's something that was addressed. I have a Spotify publisher account. So this is. How do you know this? Literally, I'm on a podcast. Literally, <laughs> just happened. Okay. Less than twelve hours. Um, gonna play around with it. Um, that literally just happened. Um, and then, so my concern, the reason I kind of rushed into doing, getting that done, was um, there's been a lot of turnover at Dakota Media Access. Yeah. Um, and so they are, they've been, phenomenal they're just they're great to work with but with a consistent turnover and things like that i figured even without this conversation i have a mic i've got stuff if needed um, we're ready to keep rolling if we have to um i've got audition like so we have a backup plan in case for some reason they can no longer house us which i don't foresee that happening um however always good to have a backup our main point of contact will be leaving in two weeks, and I don't know what that's going to look like. This position has been posted. They're looking for a radio engineer, so they're going to kind of separate Ben's duties and have one person be primarily focused on radio and the other person primarily focused on video. Yeah. So they're looking for somebody with a little more experience on the radio engineering side. They've been having some mechanical or not mechanical, but technical problems where the signal drops, the programming drops, and then if you're listening to 1025 and you hear symphony music, there's a pretty good chance they've lost their signal because that's the backup that fills in rather than just dead air. So they're hoping to find somebody that's got a little more knowledge in how to troubleshoot those things. But yeah, Ben's, Ben's resignation kind of caught a few of them off guard there. So yeah, Ben has been amazing to work with, and they're actually changing their scheduling system too. She wanted me to trial, but I was on vacation. But now they're going to schedule in that way, and I, we've always done the scheduling through him. That'll be another thing that we need to 
but they've been very good to work with, but there have been very few technical difficulties that we've dealt with. Thus it, having to retake two shows. And it, so they have the new, there'll be new scheduling, new upload policies. So as we're learning, hopefully there'll be no disruptions, um, but if he's ending the end of this month and we're turning, you know, just fingers crossed for us guys, that's all I'm asking for. Oh. Um, we've had some really great, I like, you guys, you gotta be listening to this podcast if you're not, it's great. Like I hate to say that about something that I'm doing, but it's great. Even the podcasts that were like, well, like you feel very meh afterwards, you listen to it and they're great. And um, tomorrow's is going to be Lieutenant Colonel Dashendor from the National Guard. And I sent it out to a few people just to get feedback in case there was any, you know, like some red tape issues or anything and nothing but positive feedback from everybody so far that listen to it um so i'm super excited about that well, two after that are really good Kelsey Zotnick yeah. from Tracy's Sanctuary House and Erin Obat who one of my favorite guests of course we all we all sort of fan someone girl. fangirl <laughs> her. Um, I won't say I fangirl when I'm around here but I understand um, I just I I think like the time I feel like there's so many people we want to get on there that have Time was not an issue. We could just do this constantly. It was awesome. Um, but so with that, I think this is why Kaylin is on. Um, is Sergiana and I had been talking kind of about some ways to potentially grow, not just like Spotify versus Mixcloud, things like that, but grow the awareness for the podcast. Um, and we're looking at social media platforms. Um, and I kind of threw it by Kaylin. And I don't, are you on there? Kaylin? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I don't know if you and Jason had a chance to kind of discuss anything further and fill us in on some of your insight or opinions. Um, we had talked about it a little bit. Um, Jason, do you want to kind of run through some of that or? As far as promotional ideas? Yeah. Well, short of our social media and press releases and things like that, I'm not sure where else we can really go with it. So, So, because we had, I had mentioned to him about potentially having our own social media for the podcast alone. And then that kind of brought up a slew of questions. <laughs> um, the, the questions being, would it be HRC social media or these are your neighbors social media? Because then that also brings up the questions of moderators and admins. And you don't, if it was HRC, you don't want to tell people no, but you also, it's not effective to have nine people moderating a page. If it was, these are your neighbors, it would be easy. But then what happens if one of us gets kicked off the HRC, then do we just move a new admin in? Um, we had also talked about, <laughs> we had also talked about um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, because I think these conversations that we're having are ones that people in the age demographic of Instagram, like I know we can't share a podcast on Instagram, but we can share the image. We can share, you know, like Kelsey Botnick, who traced Sanctuary House. If we're sharing our picture of her with the link, then we can share something that she's doing that's really cool. Like that age demographic, they want to make an impact in their community. So we think Instagram would be great. It then would feed very easily into um, Facebook, which for those of us that are my age and older, Facebook is our primary means. But then LinkedIn has its potentials too. Um, so we kind of discuss all this. To this point, um, <clears throat> 
I don't believe that the city has ever looked at anything like this because none of the committees probably have navigated this. Um, but when you look at HRC mission, it's about an atmosphere of inclusion, equality, and accessibility through education and outreach to recognize the value of a diverse community. And so this outreach now is kind of entering into 2023. You know, it's not just posting. How do we navigate this as a city committee? Um, and has anybody even tried navigating this? Would this be something we would need to bring to the city commission to find guidelines or adjust ordinances? Or is there is there some leeway in this? And we just would talk with the city attorney and communications about how the best way to go about this. Or don't you know? Are you asking me? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying this is probably the route in my mind that we would be going because I think we would do a disservice to the city of Bismarck by not going this route when the whole point is education and outreach. And this is the most accessible way in 2023. What do, what do you mean by disservice? By not going by the, not going the route of you know trying to figure out a way to do social media with this committee. Um, but we up till this point, in looking at the history of the last 20 years, we're probably the most. We're doing a lot of things different with outreach and trying to navigate this and just an occasional post on the city of Bismarck page is not reaching the audience of the city of Bismarck as much as we could. So you would be leaning more towards an HRC versus uh, these are your neighbors. No idea. I think Possibly, yeah. But I mean, even utilizing, even utilizing an HRC page would be more accessible than just a podcast page. But it's or just the city of Bismarck page. You know what right. I mean? I am more apt to be like, oh, what's going on at the city of Bismarck? I mean, no offense because Kaylin and you all do an amazing job, but a wide range of people are not going to be just adding the city of Bismarck page commonly. That's true. So when Kaylin and I talked a little bit, and so some of my in my brain when I think HRC first, if we're if we're doing pros and cons of the two, if we did these are your neighbors, we'd really get to showcase amazing organizations doing awesome things in the community because that would be able to be our whole platform, change makers in the community. If we did it and then still share everything that the HRC is doing. Because we're on the HRC, yep. so we can potentially mm -hmm. And right. HRC are change makers. If we did it from an HRC, I think there would be more of the red tape and we would be limited to what we are. I feel like we would be more limited to what we can share from other organizations because it, I, I don't, because like, if we share from one, but not from one that we've been involved with before, are they going to be upset and things like that? You know what I mean? So I think, Kaylin, I know you had some thoughts on, on those as well. And I think you also saw both sides to both ways. Yeah, I, I think that if you go the route of an HRC page, I think that that might be the safest way to start because you can have more potential things that you can push be the humanitarian award, um, some of the events that the HRC has, things like that. And you might be able to grow that to a point where it could split off and be a podcast account as a separate entity. But maybe in the early going, trying baby steps to just get a content calendar knocked out and and kind of get the oh the swing of just administering that page um it, it might be easier to have it from a more broad uh, focus that the hrc would have um I, I was thinking about ways that you could promote um and revisit an entity that you 
um, did on the podcast, maybe that's where you come up with like a branded hashtag or something like that, like revisiting somebody or something like that. I don't have a, a catchy name for it right offhand, but um, you might be able to create a, a mini brand within that HRC that allows you some of that flexibility to go and revisit some of those organizations. And that might be the, the bridge to making the HRC account a better option, perhaps. So could we, even if it was under the HRC, we could still focus just like on change makers in the community, even if it's not directly taught, like, you know, the Bismarck Library is doing something awesome. We could share that, even if it's not directly tied to the HRC then. I think good content is good content. And it, if that if that is something that you guys know of something that, that is worth promoting, I, I'm all for it. We have to get some type of city approval from somewhere. Yep, somewhere. Oh. We haven't done this before. And when I say this, I'm referring to any, any committee or advisory board taking on a presence. This is getting, we're into a pinhole here pretty quickly from our big organization down to one, one little dot in the atmosphere here. So I'm not trying to pour water on it, but at the same time, I think we would have to kind of walk through this one a couple different times. I guess my initial concern is making sure you've got enough content to remain out there. Once a month isn't going to do it. Kalen's pushing stuff out three times a day. We're not adding hundreds of followers on a regular basis anymore. We made a huge jump in the winter time when we had a snowplow video that literally went around the world 13 million times. And ever since then, we've been flatlining. We're plowing along at 15, 16,000 people. And that's where I think, because I don't disagree with the HRC starting and growing it, but I think with the these are your neighbors platform we would have a lot easier content to be consistent with because we could focus on all of the organizations that we've already featured and the work that they're consistently doing so with that my concern is this <coughs> Are we becoming a promotional <coughs> entity? Not for not just for us. We're promoting the good things happening in the city. And I think that even that is a fine line because we're a committee about inclusion, equality, and accessibility, not just good things. Does that make sense? Yep. And if we stray outside of that. We're straying into a territory where anybody could say, well, this is a good thing. How come you aren't showing on showcasing this good thing or this is a good thing and they're doing nice things in the community because lots of people are doing lots of very nice things in this community. But does it have to do with inclusion, equality and accessibility? Within our city. <coughs> Make that into our mission statement. It is. It is. Oh, I mean, oh, <laughs> for that page. No, that's a very, very valid point. And then, too, I'm also concerned if we do this, what, what are we starting for the city of Bismarck and it every other? Mm -hmm. I can tell you, there's no bandwidth in Kalen's workday for <coughs> more at this point. We right. are so yeah. overtaxing one individual. I'm not going to ask him to do anything else right now. Right. In my mind. Getting the podcast out of a more accessible format where Spotify or whatever, I believe that will open up a whole heck of a lot more and the city of Bismarck can post it and everybody can share it. But compared but the thing to that's hap not happening is not everyone sharing. So that was my question here. How many of you honestly, because we can look, have shared? I've done a few, probably not uh, a lot. How many of you have not shared? You know, you, people aren't sharing. Here's why. I've shared a few and people try and access it. And if they access it three weeks out, 
they can't find it because it doesn't directly take them to that podcast. It takes them to the main page where they have to create an account or search and all of that. You can go directly to that podcast. It's, it's not user friendly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which we Whereas, found that you can directly go to that podcast. You have to copy and paste it. I figured how to do it. Okay. But um, it takes a little bit of work on, on the front end. People that I know yep. are not willing to. They wouldn't. I had to literally link my direct one that I was on and send it out to people. And so I think, or in my mind, the first step would be, let's try getting on a different <coughs> platform, as well as the one that Dakota Media Access works with, in a way that is accessible, and see if that does anything for us. Could we, because that was a conversation I had with, with uh, Kaylin, too, is that we know he's one person, and that he's, like, already, but could... Uh, <laughs> Could Sergiana and I go rogue and just be co-host, like literally start an Instagram co-host of podcasts and not represent the city at all? You saw a totally different podcast? No, this one. No, okay. not in my mind. I wouldn't in good conscience feel comfortable because then who's to say that Carl and I don't want to just branch off? That's true. <laughs> The, the thing is, is, is if we're not getting buy-in from our own committee, how are we getting buy-in? And that's where our frustration is. Because I told Kaylin, I was willing, I'm willing to do every single Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm willing to do all that work because that's how much I believe in this podcast with him overseeing it. Granted, I have a communications background, but we're not getting buy-in. And... And the posts that Keelan posts on the city business page, I actually write them. So we're not really like, I'm posting them. We're not even Keelan or asking Keelan to do anything for the podcast. Just feeding it to him. We're just feeding yeah. it to him. And because right. we know the guests because it's the easier way to do that. Which is greatly appreciated. Because yeah, it, it doesn't take. It's a lot easier to feed yeah. the machine sometimes. And... To it's... your point, 100% hear you. I am, I follow and like the city of Bismarck does not come up in my feed. I do not know when those drop. Is it where when it drops, we can all get an email? It's you know what I mean? It either drops every other Monday, either in the morning or the afternoon. This okay. week it was the afternoon. And that's and that's where it just gets, because I, I think, I don't think people realize how much work, and how, and I wouldn't, I'm not, when I say this is a lot of work, there's not an ounce of complaint in me because it's the greatest thing I get to do. But if we're not getting buy-in from the people here who are supposed to believe in it, like maybe social media is not the right answer now, but we need to get buy-in. Like that would be my ask. Okay. I think we can come up with a couple ways to do this. Um, just in my mind, just some thoughts. Every single one of us are probably on like 15 committees each. And you know what I mean? And that's probably minimum. Um, I don't want you two to feel as if you're running through a pointless process. Okay. Which I don't think we feel, because I know the work okay. we're putting out. You're hoping for more. Right. Okay. And that would help support which the, the entire committee believes in this podcast. I mean, we all have been gung-ho behind it from the start. Just in my mind, ways that I could possibly help out is when it drops, sharing it and tagging everyone on this committee in it, you know, so they can easily access it and then share it from there you know oh everyone's tagged in it perfect it'll pop up in my feed you know in my notifications that i was tagged in something it's a real easy way to just hit share and put my little spin on it too we have to be our own media marketing management type people we're not media marketing but you know what i mean we have to be our own people to try and push this out that's a great way to start but again to the point if it's not an accessible podcast site, how much is that going to get us? But we also have to be extremely careful with Spotify because with Dakota, like, so as I start going through the process, 
if there's any type of advertising, like there's a whole list of things that, and so I have to meet with Dakota Media Access as well too, because they're a nonprofit or a city entity. There can be absolutely like, if we even raise a penny somehow accidentally, yep. a lot of issues there legally. Correct. So, and there but, are a ton of city and state ran nonprofits, all three of those things that have podcasts. Yeah. And so navigating it is going to be interesting. And if it doesn't work, we don't do it. You know, does Spotify have revenue sharing ads across all of their screens or only for those non subscribers? Of those That's what I'm in the process of researching right now. Because I run a nonprofit and I'm very aware of that. Yeah. Um, that would be my first question. But the, I can't remember the last time something from the city of Pittsburgh came across them. Anywhere. It's you like, just you have to actively look for it. We have to actively look for it. Yeah, because I didn't come across my feed. We, they posted the new one today, and I had to go search for it myself to share it. But yeah. So how do we get that fixed for the city of Bismarck? You have to engage it more. So go through the city of Bismarck and start liking every post that comes up. You know, go through the page and like 15 of the posts. Make a comment on a few of them, and it'll start bringing it into your algorithm more. Yeah. Okay, I've never paid attention to that part of the, uh, the algorithm the, before. The other thing that we very well encouraged our guests is for them to share it themselves. So we'll send out an email prior and say, this is when your launch is. You need to, if you can share it to your social media, any type of social media for business that you work for. Um, that's where our numbers have gone up when they've shared it in multiple different locations because they have a lot of buy-in from their friends or whatever. So we've been encouraging that as well. And then if I have them on my Facebook page, I'll take them. So Kelsey's friends with me. So she's on my Facebook page. So, but she's already shared, like she already pre-shared that she was on the podcast. So people know what's coming up. And then she's like, I'll share it when, I, when it comes up. So the numbers go way up if you do that. In that email that you send to those guests, could you BCC or CC the city admin so that they can then just shoot that right out to all of us? Is that something that you and Whitney would be okay with? Mm -hmm. You just turn around and send it back out to us. Then we have an idea of when to watch, how to watch for it. Mm -hmm. Because I'll, I'll say, I don't know the timing and I, I don't pay attention to how it all comes out. I'll catch it on Saturday mornings because I'm out running errands and I want to listen to it on the radio. You know, and it's easier to act, access for me on the radio than it is you know, through the podcast site. Yeah. But, and, it, and even just simple things like, so say we listen to this one, and even if you're like, oh, I don't want to share this one, but hey, tag one of your friends, I think this would be a, like in the comments, I think this would be a great one for you to listen to. You'd really like this, liking it, throwing a smiley, like those are what help our analytics. Okay. You know, you don't have to share, share, share. Simply clicking a like or engagement. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think those will be helpful too, because like I don't, I haven't posted on Facebook in probably two, three years, because I pretty much just use it if I have to go do posts for like young professionals, and that's the only reason why I have it. Yeah. So some sort of reminders would be helpful, because otherwise I'm not really. But yeah, <laughs> like we, I think our biggest one was on um, was it. Instagram store like Instagram does really well with the stories. It's on LinkedIn, so LinkedIn is another great way to share with your um per, like your peers. Like, hey, this would be great for like especially in the hospital field. Kelsey's would be a great one to share with hospital. Oh, uh -huh. I see what Whitney's doing. I think it's Kaylin that's got that one there. Oh, okay, Kaylin, we go favorites. in and we do favorites. So if you jump on on you know you're in your own account profile, jump on a page, click on the favorites and you can prioritize an account within your feed so it'll okay. deliver more frequently I know that no <laughs> <laughs> okay. thanks Kaylin. yeah that'll help <laughs> okay you won't just get this information but you're going to get that's all right. stuff that's that out. works so that's all i have for the podcast Okay. Yeah, but, uh, our next guest is who we're taking Tyler after Kelsey and Aaron. It's Tyler Elk. Okay. And we're looking for one more in November. Okay. One more in November. Yes. We already 
Yeah, we already acquired him. We got uh, her name is Zoe from the Red Cross in December. I'm super excited to work with her and see all the cool things that they're doing. You talk to Leah. She's yes. actually on our list. So I'll I really want to talk to Jordan Moffat. Okay, let's do that. We'll see. We'll we will, yeah. Or you need to fill a spot in November. No, I think we're good now. Yes. Okay, yes. Good. Yes. good. We have like 50 guests. Like That's our, right. we literally have so many guests that trying. We try to separate so that it's not all one topic or all. We try to, you know, mix male and female and things like that. So, yeah. I might have another one. For so, you. email type. Yeah. <laughs> the owner of the India clay oven. Oh, yeah, is that right? Okay. Oh, you watch me. Oh, thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, if there's no more discussion, <laughs> we'll move on to agenda item number five community conversations discussion. At the last meeting, we discussed a lot of stuff. I really kept notes on that part. Um, we discussed our upcoming spring event of having a community conversation with city commission, mayor, and how we would navigate this. And correct me if I'm wrong, we had some healthy discussion about it, some lengthy discussion, and we felt at the time to possibly do a more guided conversation with our elected leaders instead of having a community just firing open forum questions at them because that's honestly not fair to our leaders. You know, um, they brought up at the hate crime ordinance hearing that they felt um, they would appreciate more conversation in the community about anything along these lines. And so I think it would be good for us to try and create that opportunity because they're seeking engagement from the community. And so what better way for us to help education and outreach within our community with a diverse community to go that route. Now, I apologize. I don't remember exactly where we left off with the conversation. Does that sound like a good summation of what we had kind of spoken on? Okay. I think I'm creating words or it's just not connecting. Okay, in my at head. least you can pronounce them. It's not I, even connecting in We had a few brain. different conversations. There was one the month prior to that. So yeah. I think it gets muddied as far as where we left off. I do remember it was guided conversations rather than a free for all. Yep. Or even the last one. where we could allow opportunity for the community to submit questions or topics yes. instead of just allowing them to come in and fire them cold at whoever we have on the stage or whoever is willing to participate. Because that way, then at least they have an opportunity to review the questions too. You know, so that they have an opportunity to prepare and have a healthy conversation where we're more kind of guiding it. And I think too, if we could find like an MC who in general in the community would be viewed as very neutral. Well, almost everybody knows. Everybody knows Tia. <laughs> Isn't he a like motivational? Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 No, like just someone in our community, well respected, neutral, to facilitate the questions. You know. Do you have any insight for us? I was just looking at my notes from last time, and what I wrote was. Start with an open forum, invite select members, also involve other community members, invite community stakeholders, come prepared, um, invite members on stage to share their stories, call for guests and stories to help shine a light on two or three topics, um, have the commission on site to listen. And then I think it was Geraldine that said, stick to the commissioners that asked for the conversation and focus on who wants to talk about the issues. 
I think we discussed more after that vote. Yeah, I so think I we decided not just having because there's commissioners who are on our board or on the city commission now who weren't present during all of this, and it's not fair to just selectively ask a few people to participate, but have an open invitation and hope that all of them would participate, you know, invite that space at the table for everybody. Um, so, we tend to move at a very slow pace. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, it's October. And we were looking at February. I'm lost without my phone right now. Just so you know. yeah, I'm purposely putting things in my calendar. So I don't um, my, if anybody recalls or can look, I'm almost positive we picked a date February in February. 8th. February 8th, yeah. Okay, February 8th. So, so we're going and forth where we want to have it, and we didn't even. Let's decide what we'd like to have it. Let's we, we do two ideas of places to host this. We discussed downstairs and we discussed the library, correct? And I thought we discussed BSC. And yep. BSC, which we, I think we all liked the theater idea of yep. BSC. So I I feel like we have to look at- the Heritage Center? Yeah. I might encourage a place that doesn't charge rent. I was gonna say. Like the library or this building. Okay. You're gonna have to pay a fee if you go to the Heritage Center, I believe, and you will pay a fee at BSC for sure. Um, with BSC, they used to partner with this committee 15 years ago, 10 years ago, um, going through the archives, the archives, looking for our 20th anniversary get together that we had. Um, there were forums that they used to host at BSC. There is a diversity committee at BSC that used to help and has actually grown there. Um, it's a much larger committee than it used to be. If we would look at BSC, I would think we would want to work with them and see partner with them. And that possibly could be an opportunity to utilize the theater without having to pay an exorbitant fee. Um, Meetings that were both city and state government agencies. Do you have any point of contact? I can email them tomorrow. Um, or just a, do they have the general email? I can get that to you because my really good friend is the secretary now of the committee. Thanks. I have stepped okay. back from the committee. Okay. Maybe if you would feel better, you can email them too. Yeah, I can. And okay. I think they're meeting here soon so we can have some information. If you, if you want to CC me in case I think I'll CC okay. admin okay. to kind of, if that's okay, Jason, or to bring you into the loop so that you can kind of communicate. Diversity? Hmm? Uh, Embracing diversity community? Yes. Yep. And I think if that doesn't work out, I think it was fully great for us to do the library because yeah. they won the Humanitarian Year Award yep. that we've given away. That space when we did the 20th anniversary it was, was fine. Like, and it's very accessible to people where yep. it's located. There's a base mean, stage. There's and I think yep. people would feel much more comfortable there than sitting in a city building. And also, the library has a big following on social media, and when they put their events out, that's that big of an audience that you're capturing. In addition to this audience that Kalen would reach with his post. So, okay. Do we want to pivot then and just do the library, or would you like us to check into BSC? I think it would be more simple. I think library is more accessible. And it's central. Yeah. Okay. We can we can even bring in the Embracing Diversity Committee and see if they'd like to partner with us. It's always better to have more people at the table trying to help pull off something along these lines. Is that coming just through BSC, or they just happen to have Just through BSC. Okay. Yep, it's... Uh, Staff, students, and organizations. Okay. So, of that community. You can check with the library tomorrow see if see which rooms are available. Did you use the big room before? Yeah. Yes. Can you remain? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have a place. Hopefully, I think that we also then need to come back at the, by the next meeting and ideas of organizations that we'd want to invite. We have the table with us, like global neighbors. Well, I'm just saying global neighbors is what comes to mind. Or this what? diversity committee that you're talking about. Let's come up with, because I think one to two topics 
would probably be the most we want because we these are big to topics. So I think in my mind, this is how I envision it. We start out with diversity within the city. And what is it? What does diversity in the city mean to you? And then that can transition into have you had adversities? Being a part of a diverse community within the city. And then touch on, finish it out with how does that fit in with hate crime and a hate crime ordinance? Because you saw numerous varied organizations coming to the table during that hate crime ordinance um, more than I ever imagined would have been present saying they feel that there's an issue. Um, and so. Like even big organizations like the Downtown Association, yeah. which I never even would have thought of them. Right. As far as that goes. So thank you. Does that sound, I mean, let's kick this around. Is that a workable? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And keeping it simple, I don't think the whole thing should be on a hate crime. No. You know, I think we want to have healthy conversations that, that stimulate so I don't all think kinds of. Realize that how diverse we are. And how much more diverse we're getting yeah. every year. Um, yeah, and we see it up at different agencies at the state now. Mm -hmm. it, over the last three years, we've added seven languages to help make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to continue. So, um, okay. So let's, our three topics are what? How does diversity in the city, what does, sorry, can't remind you already. Yeah. What does diversity in the city mean to you? Is this what you're talking about? Yep. Have you had adversities and how does this fit into a hate crime ordinance? Yep. And we can play with those three, but I think, you know, and kind of navigate those three, but I think that's a really good outline. Okay. When and how are we going to start getting, because is that what we're going to want people to respond to? Like the public, you know, how we discuss them not having it so much as an open forum, but having people submitting things? Maybe at this point, um, for this part of it, all of us can kind of come back next month with a way that we could get this out to the public. How do we engage the community to bring them in? And who are, how do we engage the community how should we or could we engage the community? And outside of our elected leaders, let's each come with one organization that we would possibly want to bring to the table. Like to communicate or just to have a booth? No, I don't even know if we want to have booths no, at this. Represent I think this. we want to have conversations. Okay. So outside of elected officials, in the beginning, I feel like we could have just the community up. So two to three people, possibly four, walking through a 20 to 30 minute conversation. I, in my mind, this is a, an hour to an hour and a half, possibly two, yeah, you know, at the longest. Like three hours ago. Yeah, at most two hours. And so we have timelines. And if you have too many people, those conversations will go on and on. And I think the biggest part would be the first part is setting up. Here's how it is when you come in, you know, and move into Bismarck as somebody in a population outside of the norm within the city. Um, what does that look like? How did that feel? Where are you at now? You know, because they're all still here. They obviously care about the city and this mm -hmm. being their home. You know, otherwise we our populations wouldn't be diversifying. So to hear why they're choosing to stay here and start businesses and be productive members of this community is a, an amazing thing. I think those stories need to be shared. And then the next part is, okay, now that you're choosing to live here, what are the things that are a struggle being here? 
it's not just people because of their language barriers, it's also no. people with disabilities. Yes. Because transportation is a huge issue. Yep. We were just talking yeah. about that on the way down here. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. transportation or frustrations. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Housing. You move here, you want to live here, and within a short while you're out on the streets. Yeah. Yep. Um, my question while we have them. Um, what is the opportunities for live streaming this or not necessarily live streaming it like Facebook live stream or potentially record? Do we have a YouTube page where we could record it and then showcase it on YouTube? What, what City would you has a YouTube page. Um, could potentially have to check with Dakota Media Access, but if it's at the library in meeting room A, <coughs> Dakota Media could set up a couple cameras record it that way, make it available. Um, I know they do that occasionally for the Bismarck Historical Society programs yep. that we host over there. And if Dakota Media Access couldn't, but one of us has wireless microphones and cameras and the capability to do the recording, just not live stream it, is that something we could record and showcase on YouTube later? Uh, potentially, yeah. The other thing is the Tom Baker room is set up with cameras and mics as well. And last month that was part of the discussion is that it's all here. This is could be an option depending on the time and day. So. I like that. It's just difficult to bring in people here. I agree. So, Library it has parking, accessible street yeah. parking. The other thing with Dakota Media, if their staff isn't available, Mary has said in the past that any type of recorded program can be given to them for distribution and showing. So okay. they even have cameras that they can check out. Oh, it didn't work. Okay. So I mean, if it gets that dire that their staff isn't available. Somebody could get a 90 minute crash course on how to set up a couple of cameras and hit the red button and you're, and you're there. Um, library's got wireless mics, they've got handheld mics, they've got projector, screen. I mean, it's, it's built for a public presentation. We had 160 people in the room last week, Wednesday, for the Historical Society program. The it, mansions. Yep. It's it, was, really cool. it was literally standing room only in there now last week. So, the room will hold, I think it says 200 on the door, but we had 160 seats out and it was full. I thought it was only 150. Whoops. Still a pretty good number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we good? I think if we take this in small bites. I don't really think <clears throat> if people, I know when he sends out a reminder email, but if people can't make it for the next meeting, can they at least email Whitney and let them know of potential organizations that we might not think about? Because I can tell you right now, SAS is going to think of different organizations that are more related to Native American than I probably know. And um, Geraldine is going to probably think of different, she does a lot with housing organizations than I would. So if people are going to, and I'm just using them because they're not here. Right. Not that they're not going to be your next meeting, but just if you're not going to be here, if you can submit that, so it's not just the same pony of us submitting organizations. We might completely miss an organization. <laughs> okay. Great. Is the committee <laughs> all right with moving forward on to the next agenda item? Mm -hmm. One real quick thing, if I may, when you get down to the point where you've got this all dialed in, you're going to want to get in front of the city commissioners and give them a report on what your intentions are. So for two reasons, one, if you're going to invite them and two, you use that as an opportunity to highlight and showcase what it is you're doing. It's kind of the kickoff to, hey, here's what we're doing. Okay, we need to get in front of by December. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Do we have also ready for the humanitarian of the year? We're going to talk about that in other business. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to running meetings. <laughs> and, uh, agenda item six end of year budget discussion. I'll turn this over to city admin. Thousand dollars left, and next year's budget was increased by a thousand dollars. Can we put it? What? 
towards Martin Luther King and things. Well, I was. Oh, we actually got the. Oh my God. I was hoping that we could sponsor the um, Global Neighbors Gala. Actually. Your, so in the past, I hedge my bets here and think I know where you're going. So in the past, the group has decided at their December meeting to donate all the remaining funds for that year's budget to the MLK Junior event. We've been able to get that down to the penny. Because you have an extra thousand dollars in next year's budget, the MLK event is in January of next year. You could consider meeting at that time, but I'm guessing that day of the event and the day of your meeting are going to be on top of each other. And the sponsorship would have to be in arrears if you were going to use twenty twenty four dollars. How much is the sponsorship for the global neighbors? How much have we done for MLK in the past? We had yeah, hoped been close to a thousand dollars because it's been the remaining balance. I was going to recommend possibly like a two hundred dollar okay. sponsorship, but I would need to bring more information. You did two fifty for Dakota Pro Musica. Yep. And I think the Pride event is in the booth for that 250 as well. Yeah. We're here to 250 for Global Neighbors and the rest of the budget for MLK. Yes. In my mind. So just going off of some historical where we have been trying to go with the MLK event because it always falls at the very beginning of the year. In January, and it as a organization, no, is on its own, a standalone. Um, we had talked about working towards being able to give a thousand consistently to it, but that'll adjust with every budget. You know, the more opportunities that we have to interact and help, I think. It's a good thing. But I do think the Global Neighbors isn't going to be till January or February. So we could look then at using the some of the beginning of the 2024 funding. The increase of $1,000 in the budget was predicated on the idea that this group has been actively engaging with other organizations and finding more ways to support them. So thinking about $2024, is another new entity that would be potentially sick. No. I'm curious, I don't think we've questioned this. What do they spend the funding on? I know that they're a standalone. I know it costs $500 per speaker. So there's a thousand dollars there. Pretty sure Trinity gives them the space for free. Yep. But what is the money going towards? Are they just taking our thousand dollars? Because I mean they're not profit. Are they considered standalone? They consider it a nonprofit. Is my question. I believe so, which yeah. is why they the church is managing their funds. You're so, talking the MLK Junior yes. Celebration Committee, yeah, or whatever that official name is. Yeah, because oh, I guess they're probably being the musicians. Yep, yeah. and I was just gonna say yes. they do pay. And the you've been on, have you been on the committee? Or they they haven't been on the they committee. Asked you. Yes, okay. and I've turned it down. They asked okay. me to be chair, and I was like, no. I wanted to because I don't know who, who I can't remember who's, who does it now. Bill Padre did it for years. And then Julie did and it. Julie did it. And but then it was don't. questioning where the check was at one time, which totally put me off. Yep. But I mean, I, I think we kind of know what want to know what the money is going towards. And don't they have the rules? Like, because if I ask for a thousand dollar donation from a, they've never asked from, for anything from the moose. Yes. I, or if someone donates, I tell them what it's going for. Okay. So. I think that we should donate agree. to them. I agree. I love that event. It couldn't make it last year to make me sad. Right. But I'm just wondering what they're. So let's see if we can get a budget breakdown of last year's spending. I don't think that's too much of an error request. And yeah. your funds are like. Because this will be our third year in a row donating close yep. to thousand dollars. Yep. And so to see where the. Okay. MLK. And we donated for three years. Yeah. I don't think it would be if if they have it. I don't think it would be the worst thing to get all three years of where our money was spent because last year may have been an anomaly. Okay. Yes. Agreed. Yep. Yep. MLK committee budget breakdown. 
New Jersey, because then we're being fiscally responsible. Um, to that point, how much leeway do we have coming up with an actual budget? Sorry, what was the question? Are we, even though we're a highly rotating committee, are we able to come up with a budget? Of, I well, think we, that would be wise. Well, we yeah. think we want to spend in the next year. Right. <laughs> it was odd to me when I came on that we just kind of vote each and every meeting, oh, let's spend this here, and we never know what we have. But we know that we're expanding and interacting more with the community. And on the heels of requesting information from the MLK and program. Or Whitney could spend a few minutes and break down where the funds have been spent here because there's been swag, there's been registration, there have been other promotional things. So you've done a nice job of leading your funds annually. I think we can give you a pretty good idea of where it's going to help with your budgeting items. And to tighten things up there. And I think things. this year alone it was like $1,200 in swag for all the different events. And then that's half the budget right there. Yeah. And then too, it would allow us as community or as committee members to be like, hey, uh, this does not really apply to us. But like the out of the darkness walk, that's something I think we should support. You know, like if we then are have things that actually align with our, our mission um, that we could maybe plan out for like, hey, it would be great even if we could do a $50 sponsorship for this it would help us plan ahead for the year, right. I think. Yeah. Okay. It's with us tracking this, it, it'll also give us a more understandable way. What are we getting in a return for that? Such as with our swag that we never really realized would be such a big thing. We're suddenly getting people who are coming to the committee meetings and who are asking for engagement with this community. And so there is a turnaround for that expense. So to be able to recognize that for what it is. And also for the report, X amount of money went to this, to yeah. this, to this, to this, to show the city commission what we're Good. doing. I think it's great. Shows we're being responsible. Um, so at this point, if I'm hearing the committee, we want to hold off on making any decisions on end of your budget at this point until we get further information at next month's meeting. Okay. What was our ending budget right now? Like a thousand dollars for the for the rest of the year. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Let's move into other business. Agenda item seven. Three things, of course. Okay. <laughs> I just need to go on my new member applicator. Disappeared. Whitney had it up there on the screen. Oh. On the way. I need to know. Um, well, who's up for re-election besides me, first of all? Oh, thank you. So what you're looking at there is our financial tracking system. Enough to see the screen. So the Amazon purchases would be the swag items, um, t-shirts, bags, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's an addition to seven fifty. So for what for it? The date on that, April eighteenth. Would that be when you would have paid for Pride that early? Uh, yes. So because they seven. use that as a fiscal agent. Yeah. North Dakota HRC. The Dakota Awards, those would be the humanitarian I'm awards. Why are crying so weird though? Because there's seven seven fifty for a processing fee. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's two Even though they require you to do everything electronically, right? right. Because they have to charge you for the fee. Well, it was basically Sway, Pride, Dakota for Music Guy. Because mm -hmm. yep. last year we must have did that. The, the 330 for the Coda Awards. Must be swag. Is that swag, Whitney, or is that humanitarian awards? Humanitarian awards for 330 for the yeah. two. Okay. We're ordered in, or paid for in May. Okay. Is the two we already have those? Those are the, mm, those are the ones from 2021? 2022. 
No, we're. I don't think we gave them in 2022 because that was the discussion we, last time. We paid for them. Hey. It's a lot of money because I brought it up. So it was the library was the last one, right? Yep. Like, so I think they were going to give 2023s at, or 2022s at that because yeah. of like the alignment of timing, right? So, so we gave 2021s in 2022, yes. right? Because if you were, it's yes. like when I, I won the Woman of Impact in 2021, but was given it in 2022. Yes. Yeah. Are they just really behind on sending an invoice? It's <laughs> like very deep into 2023. Some people don't care if they get paid quickly or not. That's what I was like Can thinking. Can we look into that? The last humanitarian yeah. award that we gave was 2021. It was Public Library in Geraldine. But it was given in 2022. 2022. Okay. But this is the invoice from 2023. That's this is kind of confusing. Yeah. So then that took money out of our 2020. Okay. And it should have, okay. We'll look at it tomorrow. Okay. Make sure we know what we're doing. Okay. All right, so as far as who is all up for re-election? Re-election. Or re-nomination or whatever. Um, we'll, grab, I we'll grab the book. I like having that screen there. I don't remember ever seeing it. Before. It's new. Oh, here, it oh, here we go, Jason. Nicole and Darcy. You. So it's the Nicole, Darcy, and me. So can I apply already just to get it over with? <laughs> the application's on our website all the time. So I can just do it. Mm -hmm. okay. We use the same form for every advisory board and committee. Okay, I'll pull up. And no one's terms are like Darcy can reapply. They're not turned out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Darcy, I, think, so. I think Darcy's done. Darcy's I think this sure time now. because yeah, I think this is yeah. this is the end for for, for now. Yeah. As I understand it, you can be off a year and then reapply. But yeah, there's it was January, January, January. 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 It'll be end of December. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, she took over some of this term. Okay. Maybe not. So that was new business one or other business one. Number two is I think like at every meet we decided that if we have an event prior to talk about the event at the next, like if we do sponsor an event, to talk about it then to debrief on it. Which oh, Matthew Shepard event? Oh, so it was Jason, myself, and Tia who did the. Yami was there for Sanford, but she sat with us <laughs> during the event. But I think it, there was a lot of good conversation with people, a lot of good swing given. I think it was a very great event for us to be at. Yeah. So many people just thanked us for like being there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we and again, business cards. numerous conversations about. We didn't even know that there was a committee like this for the city. Yep. So again, exposure, outreach, education. Um, I haven't seen Trinity that full for an event in a long time. I think it was a larger crowd than even the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday celebration. They are doing one for Ukraine and yep. Jason was here to do for the is doing for you for in this room, I believe. Questions, comments? Sounds like the veggies was also very um, successful too. Oh yeah, because they traveled the next day to Bemidji. They sang on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And Corbin was very sad because she was like, I didn't get to ask to do a table there. And oh. I was like, because I got a very last minute ask to do that like two days before the event. <laughs> the last one is the Humanitarian of the Year Award. I had emailed Jason because we talked about it this last meeting just to see where we're at as far as taking applications. I don't know. Do you guys have Here, a chance? The announcement's out. The applications are available. Maybe another thing to like, share, and follow on your favorite social media account that you follow us with. Okay, it is out on 
So on our Facebook. When's the last day for applications? Good ask. Um, November. <laughs> but he's gonna find it faster than I will. <laughs> Kalen might have it too if he's still on because Kalen did the presser for it. Here have you got it? I think we wanted it in November because we wanted to mm -hmm. name it by December. Yep. The last one is like the Sunday before the meeting in November. The meeting in November? We wanted it for the meeting in November? Yep. So they'll, like, the it'll close the Sunday before the November meeting. November so then 12. you guys can look at them on your, no, at your November meeting. Back, it'll go out the 13th or 14th, and then your meeting would be. No, oh, submissions are due on November 12th, so let's see. Oh, they're here. You would have to go out the same day. <clears throat> you don't meet until the 21st of November. So the packet will go out Monday the 13th or the Tuesday the 14th. You'll have all the applications, and then you can make a decision at the meeting on November 20th. That could land on the City Commission agenda November 28th or December 12th or December 26th. So you'll have three meetings to hit 2023 board for 2022. And how will they work moving forward just so it doesn't end up being like a two year gap? It became a gap because if I remember right, it used to be in the spring and then it got switched to October because of the 20th anniversary celebration. And then it was, well, we're going to do this every October. And then it's, I guess we're not. Yeah. You guys need to just make up your mind. Be it safe, bluntly. I think we should do it in the spring. Your choice. We're just here to help. So then, when we have to like do the 2023, like and Dr. Ross would never get his award just yep. immediately <laughs> after. Yep. Since you did it so well, you can do it again in two months. How about yep. that? Sounds <laughs> perfect. Okay, so we want, we're still doing the same where it's a, an individual and it's a. It's your call. Um, Yep. It, it's it. it's your call yeah. if you get good applications. Um, you saw what the, the award costs are, so yeah. you know, it'll be part of your budget discussion for next year. Yeah. So I really have to put this up. Last time I went and talked with well, the only one that went on North Dakota Day. I went on North Dakota today. No, I went on the radio. And you went on the radio yeah. and yeah. talked about it. I was on and then we got applications after shows. that. Yep. So I don't know if you want to look at doing that again. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We need to get out and... You don't look excited about that. No, I'm thinking we need to get out right now. Because yeah, we, we do. I mean, I can get on. I know I can get on the radio and TV, but I don't know how on TV. I can go on TV. I can get on the radio shows. Oh, do you want to do the AM? Just contact. Do you want to Jordan. do the AM shows and I'll do the FM shows? Well, I was just going to do uh, the one that I get on all the time, which would be Big Rig. Okay. FM. Do Big Rig. I'll do uh, Rock 101. I think that's what I did last time. Are we Ron reaching out or is Kaylin reaching out? We, I did last time. We, to Jordan Ziegler at Q4. Yeah. I was going to say it's probably best to do KX News. Schedules and things. We could probably talk to Jamarlo Phillips at KX News. Okay, KFYR. And then who was KX? Jamarlo Phillips mm -hmm. is one of the night reporters. Jamar. J A M A R L L O. Jamarlo. You go to KX's website oh, and find a story. They usually have an email for every yeah. reporter yeah. after the story. And you'll want to probably, never mind, I'm not going to tell you. Morning shows get some people the evenings to, too. <coughs> when they do more kind of local spots. Mm -hmm. Studio 701 is really good on KX. KFR also has their live online the broadcast throughout the day, too, yeah. with Jay, Jay Evans or something. Yeah. I forgot. JR. Not JR Havens. It's it's a separate guy that hosts an online program. Oh, the, the, K uh, the KFYR Plus? Called me. Yes. I think that's what it is. It would also be cool if we could get our old winners to like go live from their organization on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. We'll keep talking about it. I want to throw those organizations. I could mm -hmm. reach out to him too. Okay. Yeah. Mitchell Howard. Mitchell in the morning at KFIR, and he's also in KBU. 
Okay. No more downhill. Okay. Any other conversation on that? Hearing none, I'll open the call one more time for other business. Well, the stuff that Holly came and talked to the city commission needs to be discussed by this group at all. With the refugee. Not yet. Um, so where we're at, we're we work with a human resources consulting firm that helps us with job descriptions and grade placements and things like that. So. The what Gabby's referring to is the um, regional integration facilitator. This would be a grant uh, opportunity for the city to uh, bring on a full time individual uh, to help connect and be that hub of basically connections for new Americans in the community, um, particularly refugees and the, once we get a job description back from HR, then I will engage again with Holly to figure out what those next steps are to apply for the grant. And if we are awarded the grant, which it, I got the impression it would become very favorable for us, then we would go, go through the process of posting the position and hiring the individual and helping that person become extremely successful in the community. I believe the position will land in this office, <laughs> and that would report to me and would certainly be brought to all of these meetings as well as other things. I don't see this as an eight to five job or whomever gets this position. This would be something where probably 80, 20, 20% of their time would be in the office, 80% of the time you gotta be on the community making those connections. You can't do that sitting here. So we're going to have to be pretty flexible. That person's going to have some autonomy when it comes to doing that type of work. And it's going to be, very interesting to see how that job would evolve just based on the resources, the organizations, and the connections that are made. Okay, thank you for that, Gabby. The what? The MEI. No. No. So I will. on your work with that? Sorry. Yep. It's causing me to really question the efficacy of that organization and whether or not this group should be wasting any more time on it. Yep. They can't respond to an email after telling us we'll get to you in a week. Why are you guys even worried about it anyway? I think it's a great guideline for us to realize things we need to work on, yes. but it's not in a way that needs to be approved by them. Simply know of so areas that we need to improve. Dysfunction at a high level right there. Small. Small goals that came about because of it. We know that we're able to engage our city departments um, as well as affect policy and help adjust policy to engage with underrepresented communities. So I think it's a format that we can start utilizing on our own, like you said, to address other areas that we had hoped for. So so do we, like a subcommittee still want to keep meeting or like yeah. Yeah. I don't see why not. We well, just because we're not affiliated with them doesn't mean we should. We can literally just come up with our own set standard of how to engage because that was the whole point of the MEI was to address this one community to start with and then use it to address other communities so we can take their format and run yeah. with it. I think in favor of just kind of continuing to move forward. Like those things are great and. Yes, populations might look at it to have an understanding of like what the community is like or stuff, but at the end of the day, doing the actual work is what's going to speak a lot more than just mm -hmm. having that little stamp. Score. Yep. Agreed. Okay. If you ever need to talk to a different city department, I think you know who to talk to about how to help with that. Yep. Getting to the library, getting to public health is a, a perfect way to start because both of those departments within the city are right there with the MEI and this group and all of those things. One other place to start or continue those conversations with someone with the police department, the library, public facing. Yep. I've got a couple individuals over there that would be good to go to. You, you've already worked with some of them in the past, I'm sure. So, and I think that was the whole point is trying to address the public facing agencies within the city and how we can continue engaging the population. 
I will do one last call for other business. <laughs> Just a quick apology. I was on my phone the last 10 minutes. Closing a business is not easy, so I apologize for my distraction. Didn't mean to be rude. At this point, then, we'll move to the last agenda item. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We always do that. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Don't need a motion. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. I always call for one. Yeah, I, I do, too. And then I'm like, oh, you know, oh, that's one. Right. Just go away. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping to, but I don't know yet. Oh. Yes, appreciate your time. Yeah. 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 Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah.